tears in their eyes. Please welcome your host, Matthew Kelly. We're loud, we're proud, we're stars in the rise, and for the next ten weeks, we'll have the greatest musical lineups anywhere on the planet. We've toured the country trawling for talent. We've heard 428 Celine Dion's, 802 Elvises, and one Noel from Hearsay. <laughs> As himself. And this year, we have more stars who've never walked through those doors before, like pop princess Betty Boo, 70s rocker Susie Quattro, and James Dean Bradfield from the Manic Street Preachers. But if you think the old songs are the best, never fear. We've still got old favourites with new faces. However, as usual, I'm going to be Matthew Kelly, because, frankly, it's the only person I can do. And even then, I still have to concentrate. 50 stars will become 10 star finalists, then it's down to you to make just one a live grand final champion. So who's first to change their name and their voice? It is, of course, star guest number one. I'm Justine Riddock. I'm from Seaforth in Liverpool. And I live here with my boyfriend, Joe. I'm really musical and I've been learning the saxophone at the Musicians' Academy for the last year and a half. Unfortunately, my teacher keeps shouting at me, I'm not very good because I don't practice enough. I'm a true Cancerian. We're hoarders by nature. I collect Barbies. I'm ashamed to say yes, at my age I still collect Barbies. I've got 36 in total. Some of them are special editions. We've got Ferraris and much, much more. The only thing that we are missing is a Ken. All on their own, they've got no man. When I left school, I went to work as a red coat in Aberystwyth on our holiday camp. And then I went to Whitley Bay Holiday Park where I was a lighthouse. I came back to Liverpool in 1991 and I started working as a solo vocalist around the pubs and clubs in the Northwest. And that can be anything from local bingo halls to the theatre promenade in Lille. My mum Gillian, she's been supporting me, coming around with me on all my gigs. She is my unofficial roadie and she's just been there for me the whole time and I love her, she's my best friend. And after this performance, there'll be many more best friends on the way for Justine Riddock. <laughs> Justine is well used to singing alongside groups of superstars, aren't you? Oh, I certainly am. I once entered a karaoke competition, it was a sound-alike and a look-alike competition in a pub in West Derby. I entered as Cher, but I never won. But Elvis won, but Whitney Houston's mum was not impressed and she decided that she was going to smack one of the judges. So she did that and the next minute all you saw was celebrities fighting all over the place. <laughs> Well, we haven't got an Elvis here tonight, which will be good for our audience, as it turns out. So tell me about the person that you are going to be. Well, she was born in 1973 in Chicago. She went to school with Christine Slater and River Phoenix, and she's very, very famous for her 400 pairs of sunglasses. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Justine. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Anastasia. Anastasia! <laughs> she really is that kind of girl! Tonight, singing live, Justine Riddick is... Anastasia!
Oh, Justine, that is a fantastic look for you. Okay. It really suits you. We love that look, don't we? Love the look. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to tell you a little story about Justine because Justine's a perfectionist and she wanted to get this absolutely right. So she rang Anastasia's record company and said, I'm going to go on Stars in the Rise as Anastasia. Will you send me the video? And they didn't believe her. Tell everybody what they made you do. They made me sing a couple of lines down the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> and what did they do then? They all screamed and said, OK, you can have the video. <laughs> <laughs> they did. And that's from Anastasia's people, and that's how good it was. Ladies and gentlemen, Justine Riddick as Anastasia! <laughs> Before that soul star came along, the name Anastasia was associated with the Russian Revolution when the ordinary working man became a hero of the masses. Our next star is a working class hero who will make a revolutionary change for star guest number two. My name is Chris Brookman, and you could say I'm from all over, really. I was born in Cambridge originally, but spent many years growing up in Europe, thereabouts, and I've ended up here in Manchester. I'm currently in my third and final year pursuing a degree at drama school here in Manchester. I have a little son called Harper, he's six years old. I am a single parent. And when I'm not studying, we spend all our time doing all kinds of things. He loves playing baseball in the park, watching films, and reading a lot of books. Right now we're reading The Old Man and the Sea, which I'm forcing him through. Where do we land? He's a typical boy, like most kids, and he loves space and airplanes, and so I try to indulge and expand his interests where I can. And here's the other way. Love singing ever since I could remember, and been playing guitar since I was a young kid. I applied to get on Stars in Their Eyes because, well, basically, I was tired of miming in front of a mirror. And also, my little boy asked me to go for it, because it would give him a kick to watch me. And here to kick a superstar is Chris Brookman! <laughs> Travel the world over. You must have some tips for, uh, for travellers now. <clears throat> well, if you're travelling through Eastern Europe, you have to be prepared for belligerent officials. Oh, yeah. One time, I was travelling through a certain European country, Eastern European, and my son was 10 months old at the time. We were on a train, and it was through the night, and every few yards, the officials would stop, get on, wake us all up, rummage through our baggage, upset everyone in the car. So here's the tip. OK. If you want to discourage those guys, you give them the bag full of used nappies to plunge their hand in, <laughs> and that will do the trick. Fantastic! <laughs> we'll remember that next time we're in Eastern Europe, perhaps. Right. You are reading Harper Hemingway. You're teaching him the guitar. I know you're teaching him Spanish at the moment. What kind of lesson do you think he's going to learn from you being on this show tonight? That you can do anything if you really set your mind to it. That is a top tip as well, and that's an attitude that you share with the person that you're going to be. Yeah, the, the person I'm going to be started out his career in the smallest gigs, living out of a suitcase, crisscrossing the US, playing every little show like it was his last, until finally people began to respect him as he believed in himself. And they certainly did respect him. Mm. Tell me a bit more about him. Well, he started out as a folk singer-songwriter. He won the 1993 Best Song Oscar. Mm -hmm. And he's known to his fans as the boss. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Chris. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen! <laughs> Born in Cambridge via the USA. Tonight, singing live, Chris Brooklyn is Bruce Springsteen!
Well, you were born in Cambridge, you've travelled all over the world, but for three minutes you are the boss. And like all bosses, you've had three minutes work done, now you can have a lie down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Brookman as Bruce Springsteen! <laughs> Springsteen was known as the boss, and down Homefirth Way, our next star guest is known as the commercial manager. He's just minutes away from taking the stage as a former member of a group called Oasis. But he's not a Gallagher brother. Now that's got you thinking. I'll see you in a mo. Welcome back to Stars in Their Eyes with musical makeovers that will amaze your ears and astound your eyes. We've featured singers on this show that have been around for so long we're almost like an old pop star's retirement home, or as it's usually known, the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> and coming up, we've got two of pop's most stylish seniors. Here with natural style in his natural state is star guest number three. I'm Phil Cole, I'm 49 and I live in West Yorkshire. I work as a commercial manager for a graphics display company in Bradford. After a hard week at work, there's nothing better than to come into this beautiful countryside with a dog and chill out with a nice walk. I have one daughter, Liz, who is currently studying in Scarborough for a leisure management course. Liz is really proud of me appearing on Stars in Their Eyes tonight, although she's far too young to even heard of the person that I'm going to be. My first experience of singing was when I was about five or six years old. My mum and dad bought me a Tommy Steele record, Singing the Blues. And I got up there and started singing it, and I was convinced I sounded like him, but I'm not being him tonight. <laughs> I've sung in public many times, mainly with amateur operatic societies, but also with the choir that I'm with. But I don't think that's going to compare in any way to performing in front of millions of people on television. It's really scary. From the towpath to the showpath, Here's Phil Cole! <laughs> now, Phil, the people supporting you tonight, amongst them are John and Linda, who founded the choir that you are a part of. So, aside from them, how many more are in the choir? 798. <laughs> You're in a choir of 800 people. Yeah. Well, I mean... Where does the choir perform? We've been to the Royal Albert Hall twice, Birmingham Symphony Hall, Leeds Town Hall and Bridgewater Hall here in Manchester. And what kind of things do you sing? Well, we did a concert the other week where we sang the Hallelujah Chorus and then we did Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. But this is not quite the same thing. I mean, you, you'll be on your own. You won't be amongst 800. But you've always liked this person that you're going to be, haven't you? Well, he was born up here in Bury yeah. and he was a church organist. And he did quite a few tours with his pal Richard Stilgo. Mm -hmm. And he was a singer in the group Oasis. Oasis, you see, that's given it away. Oh, it's not that Oasis, though. This one featured <laughs> Julian Lloyd Webber and Mary Hopkin. Oh, rock on. <laughs> so, 
Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Phil. <laughs> tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Peter Skellen. Peter Skellen! <laughs> a true gentleman of pop. Tonight, singing live, Phil Cole is Peter Skellen! Yes, I agree But then I've got to know I'm not asking you to marry me Just a little love to show Oh, I know I could make you happy So the things I have to say won't wait until another day You're a lady I'm a man You're supposed to understand How these things are often planned to be Nothing gained So I say with no restraint Be mine Be Tell me, which is better, singing with 800 people or singing here on your own? Ooh. Singing here on my own, it's oh. cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I expect 799 people to be following your lead after this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Cole as Peter Skellen. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. There's an old phrase that says, never regret, never apologise. But our next star guest ignored that advice and spent most of her life regretting and apologising in song. But now she's moments away from the doors, it's no regrets for star guest number four. My name is Danielle Spatiri, I'm 17 years old and I'm from Bristol. I've been with my boyfriend Lloyd for two years now. We met Ashton Court Festival, which is basically a music festival which is held every year. We've basically got the same interests, we like a lot of different music and we often go to clubs to play pool and places at cinema, bowling and what have you. At present I'm studying at City Bristol College and I'm studying a um, national diploma in performing arts. Um, I'm in my first year and hopefully next year I'll go on to university. I'm a really big fan of the person I'm going to be tonight. 
and I've adored her since about the age of eight or nine. I've been watching Stars and Lights for as long as I can remember, and my ambition was always to actually be on the show. Now I'm actually on it, it's just, God, it's just a dream come true, really. And the dream's about to become reality for Danielle Spiteri! <laughs> You did say you're a huge, huge fan of this star, even though you were born 30 years after this star had her first big hit. How did that happen? Well, my mum and dad had a 50s theme room, and um, they also bought me a lot of 50s albums, like um, Connie Francis and The Person I'm Going to Be Tonight. OK, and that's where it all started. Yeah. I know that when you were 10 years old, your mum and dad took you to a concert of this person. Yeah. And something very unusual happened there, didn't it? It did. What happened? Um, well, basically, I was sat in the audience, minding my own business, and um, she looked up and said, oh, is there anyone out there by the name of Danny Aspatiri? And I was like, oh, my God, that's me. <laughs> and um, she said, well, I'd like to invite you up on stage. And you went on stage with this big yes. star. And what did she say when you got there? She said, what song would you like to sing? And I said the song, and we, we sang it together. You sang a duet yeah. with this lady. Yes. And how did it go? It went OK, except from the fact that she was singing the 60s version and I was still stuck in the 50s. So tell us a bit about her. She's actually the biggest selling teenage vocalist of all time, and she's been in the Country Hall of Fame since 1997. And what was she known as? Little Miss Dynamite. Little Miss Dynamite. Yeah. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Danielle. Tonight, Matthew, I am going to be... Brenda Lee. Brenda Lee! <laughs> Regret these have a few. Tonight, singing live, Danielle Sviteri is Brenda Lee! Well, it's one thing singing with Brenda Lee 
at the age of 10, now at 17, you are Brenda Lee. Thank you, <laughs> Mum and Dad, for having that themed 50s room, because now we've just had a themed 50s studio. It was so accurate as well. Thank you. You're a great girl, you. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Danielle Spiteri as Brenda Lee. <laughs> Stage again to see what our next star guest looks like before his transformation. I want you to take this supermarket assistant from Hampshire and mentally give him a makeover. He needs curly hair, a Manchester accent, and baggy clothes. Very baggy clothes, and that's the clue. So think back to the days of Madchester, and you were probably dancing to this singer's tune. Or maybe you just sat it out. I'll see you after the break. Stars in their eyes. Do you remember the Gap Band? They once had a song called Oops Upside Your Head, and to dance to it, you had to get on the floor and pretend to row a boat. And you could spot their fans a mile off by the stale beer and fag ends stuck to their <laughs> pants. <laughs> Only one other singer and song encouraged such behaviour, and that singer and song comes courtesy of star guest number five. My name's John Terza, I'm 20, and I'm from Haven in Hampshire. I'm a general assistant in a supermarket and I've worked here for four years. I really enjoy helping members of the public. There's some great characters out there and you get to meet new ones every day. I work on the fresh produce section. I have to make sure it's presentable and make sure the customers are kept satisfied throughout the day. I've been singing since I was really young when I performed a version of John Lennon's Give Peace a Chance at the local vicarage. That song was seen as an anthem at the time, a bit like the song I'm going to sing tonight. My girlfriend, Kat, is the reason I'm doing the show. She rang the application line, threw the phone at me and bullied me into getting an audition. She'll be in the audience tonight rooting for me and I'm doing this for her. Bully for him, bully for us, here's John Terza. <laughs> now, John, the fates have played a big part in you being here tonight. Tell me how. Well, um, 20 years ago, my nan went to see a clairvoyant and the clairvoyant told her that in, in the future a member of her family would appear on a musical TV show. Did you come from a musical family? Uh, no, not at all. My brother started playing the bass guitar about two years ago. Um, he wasn't a very good and he used to film himself in the bedroom hoping that he would be the one who was going to be on TV. And did he get on? Uh, no, he didn't. Um, when we heard that I was going to be on Stars in Their Eyes, we realised that the clairvoyant was talking about me. But Andrew supports you, though, doesn't he? Yeah, I didn't think he would at first, but as time's gone on, he's got really behind me. And when I found out I was going to be on the show, he phoned more people than I did, probably just to say that he was going to be in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Andrew. Tell me about the person that you're going to be tonight. OK, his band was around in the Manchester era um, in the early 90s, along with the Stone Roses and the Happy Mondays. The song that I'm singing tonight did have a dance, but it wasn't really a dance. It wasn't a proper dance. No. And what was his trademark? His trademark was a blue background with a big yellow flower. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, John. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Tim Booth of James. Tim Booth of James! <laughs> Make yourselves comfy as tonight! Singing live, John Terza is Tim Booth! It's hard to carry on when you feel 
over there to Tim Booth. How was it for you? Oh, oh, Nerve-wracking. <laughs> Nerve-wracking. <laughs> well, you see, the clairvoyant was right. Well, she was right about that thing, but she didn't say anything about how good you were going to be. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. Because your job is customer satisfaction mm -hmm. and... See, you've done it again. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Terza as Tim Booth. <laughs> well done. Well, we've heard the songs and admired the makeovers. Now it's the holy duty of our studio audience to turn one of our star guests into a live grand finalist. They're voting for the best sound alike, not the best look alike. So, studio audience, cast your votes now. And while they're making their choices heard, let's hear how our five-star guests made their voices heard. First, Justine Riddock was the babe with the shades, Anastasia. Chris Brookman was the boss man, Bruce Springsteen. This gun's for hire, even if we're just Phil Cole was Mr. Ladies' Man, Peter Skellen. You're a lady, I'm a man, you're supposed to understand. No apologies, Danielle Spiteri was Brenda Lee. I'm sorry, so sorry. And finally, John Terza gave us the word, according to James, as Tim Booth. We have a winner. Is it Anastasia? Bruce Springsteen? Peter Skellen? Brenda Lee or Tim Booth? And the winner is Anastasia! <laughs> Hooray! Oh, yes, it's you! <laughs> well, how are you? Completely numb. Are you? Numb. Well... I've met such good friends. I know, and you've all made great friends over the last few oh, days, haven't really you? Oh, really have. It's almost a pity there has to be a winner, but you have spared them a lot in many ways because you are now going to be the first on the live grand final. So, no pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fab and you deserve to be there, darling. That's the first show and Anastasia is our first finalist. Over the next nine weeks, you'll see 45 more amazing star guests, all hoping to follow her into the live grand final lineup. Justine's got one more chance to practice on screen before that night. So, once again, please welcome back Justine Riddock as Anastasia. Good night. <laughs>
If you've got the voice, we've got the stage. For details on how you could be walking through those famous doors on the next series of Stars in Their Eyes, phone 0870 600 1020.